You got to see yourself being joyful before you see yourself actually in real life being joyful. You got to see yourself being able to manage a lot before you see yourself actually being able to do it. Somebody say, see it before you see it. I don't live by instinct. I live by the imagination that God has planted in me because I have lived my life by the word of God. And the saddest thing, many of us are still living on instinct. Something happens, something comes. That's why fear grips you. They gave us a bad doctor report. What do we do? Instinct, freak out. Instinct, start calling everybody, sowing fear into everybody. You ain't even heard what the doctor said. They just called me. They just called me and said, death, bed, hospital, funeral. That's all you heard. Now you tell everybody else. And now instinct has seeped in. Now we all freaking out. Instead of living by the imagination of God, doctor calls before I call anybody. Father, you said in your word that I could speak to disease. See, y'all... It's so crazy that we come to church every day and you don't believe this stuff. Go somewhere else. Do like honestly, like do something else. Because until you start believing what God's word says, you only live out of instinct. But God's trying to give you an anointed imagination that then moves into a vision, that then goes into hope, that then turns into crazy faith. And then you get to a level where it's just crazier faith. Like, I didn't even believe for this. And God knew that he could partner with me. And we're about to do something that didn't even come across my mind. That's the scripture that says, eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered into the imagination of those who love me. I didn't even think of this. But God wanted to do something. So then I started looking at Hebrews chapter 11. I'm just taking, today I'm just teaching you. I'm taking you on a Bible study with me. This is what happened to me during the week. God said, just walk them through it. Hebrews 11 verse three. It says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were, everybody say framed. framed. Underline that, circle that in your Bible. It says, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen now were not made of things which are visible. That goes back to what we talked about last week. That God framed the whole world by words, but he did it with invisible. How did he do it? With things that weren't here? Things that weren't yet here? He framed the whole world and made it reality? It took me back to the phrase that we said, God's imagination created us. We are created in his image, therefore we can create with imagination. What are you saying? God saw it before he saw it. You have to see it. I don't know what it is for you, but you gotta see it before you see. You gotta see yourself being joyful before you see yourself actually in real life being joyful. You got to see yourself being able to manage a lot before you see yourself actually being able to do it. Somebody say, see it before you see it. So when I looked at this scripture and I realized everything that we're looking at right now, God saw before we saw it. This word right here framed kept messing with me. So I looked up, y'all, I love the Bible. I looked up this word framed in different passages. Look at Psalms 103, verse 14. It says, for he knows our, everybody say frame. And he remembers that we are dust. So now I started doing the real pastory thing. And I went to look this word up in the Hebrew and the Greek. Let me tell you, y'all not gonna believe this. The word frame in the original Hebrew is a word called yetzer. Y-E-T-S-E-R, yetzer. Ain't never heard of a yetzer in my life. Don't know where to find a yetzer. And this had to be God. Do you know 
what the word yetzer means? Imagination. If you look it up, the word, it says, for God knows our imaginations. And he remembers that we are dust. You can see the same word in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. First Chronicles 29, 18. This is for all the Bible nerds that need to go study it, which should be all y'all. First Chronicles 28 and 9. God knows my imagination. Let me say it like this to you. Your imagination frames your life. Whatever you're imagining is the frame that God is building your whole life on. The life you have right now, you framed it. Stop blaming everybody else. It's not your family no more. You don't even live in that house no more. You are framing your life with the thoughts that you are thinking right now. And God told me to tell you it's time to change the frame. What are you saying, Pastor Michael? Let me give you an example that kind of hits close to home. This is a drum set that I want to show y'all from like uh, probably 1821. I don't even know. This mug is old. This drum set was top of the line, world-class drum set when it came out. But it only has the frame for one symbol, a cowbell, and a snare. That's all the frame can hold. This is our drummer Tony's drum set. This mug is huge than a mug. <laughs> now I want everybody to see this real quick. This drum set is huge. It has a frame that can hold all of these. Come with me, because they don't even know. They're seeing it from the front. I want y'all to see how crazy this little boy has gotten with this drum set. No, 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 come on back here. I, I'm, I'm exposing it right now. There's symbols everywhere. There's electronic pads. There's all kinds of stuff. There's electronic double basses. There's four pedals down here. Do you need all? What's the difference between this drum set and that drum set? It's the frame it was built on. I'm going to help him. This is what the frame of that drum set looks like. Look at this. This right here is the frame. I need somebody, camera, come on. Y'all, somebody come over here so they can see this. This is big enough to be able for me to imagine. When I build my drum set on this frame, there's all kind of options. There's all kinds of toms and cymbals and everything. That's the only reason that 1921 drum set doesn't have the frame to be able to build something great. God said to me, Michael, the saddest part about this crazier faith message I'm trying to get to people is most of them do not have the frame big enough for what I want to do in their life. They don't have, they've not believed me. They haven't taken the limit off of me. And today, when I looked at that word yetzer, and it said that the worlds were framed or imagined, and that God knows our frame, our imagination. God said, Michael, the music I want to make in your life depends on the frame that you have. See, many people don't know this, but I've played drums since I was two. The difference between this drum set and that drum set on the screen is there's a lot more options here.
stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. What I was able to do and the sounds that came out and the expressions I was able to make were based on something that was built on a frame that was big enough for me to hold what I imagined. Pastor Mike, what are you trying to say? Could you imagine for more? I just, I feel like it's, the rest of the weeks for most of you are gonna be futile. If you don't get this one point, make the frame bigger. Take the limit off of God. He will not go past your belief to bring you into a place and a space that he already ordained for you. Ask the children of Israel. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.